Hello and welcome to Delicious Simplicity. I'm Anna Torkakis. On the menu today, we have these irresistible sandwiches. So today, we are going to focus on um, you know healthy sandwiches that are delicious and that are made from um, not leftovers, as we often call them, but cook things that we have cooked extra of. I know I'm always doing that, cooking extra of something so that I'll have it for lunch the next day. So the first thing I want to do today also is work on making uh, w the salads that we've made here before. This is an Italian-style chicken salad, and we made it as a salad. Today what I want to do is reconstruct that salad into a sandwich. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some um, pita bread. I'm actually going to make it two ways. One way is I'm going to make it with uh, pita bread. So what I'll do is just fold it over instead of making a pocket. That will work as well. So the first thing I'm going to do, the ingredients for the um, chicken salad are lettuce. So the nice thing about not making a salad but making it as a sandwich is I'm just going to use the leaves and not, I'm going to use the leaves without chopping them up. So I'm going to put the leaves first here. I'm just going to do two because I'm going to fold it over. If it opened up, I could have, um, I could have done that. But you know what I'm going to do is cut it in half. See if this works. Ah, there we go. I was trying to make a full or a bigger one earlier, but I'll do it this way. There we go. So we make a nice pocket here, and I'm going to put in the lettuce. I'm just, I am going to chop it up into two eight pieces each. Put that in here. And the other thing that we had in that salad was some corn. And what I've done with the corn, and of course we always have in the summer if you do a cookout, you have tons of corn left over, corn on the cob. So what I've done here is I've actually boiled these and I store them in water and they, and they keep as if they were like really just fresh, just, just cooked. So if you have the leftover corn, just keep them in the refrigerator in water. And for this, for this sandwich, what I'm going to do is cut, cut the um, corn off, off the cob. And of course, the, one of the ingredients, since it is a chicken salad sandwich, made from a uh, typical, from a salad. So I'm going to put the corn here. So I'm going to put the leaves on the outer edge, so that way it sort of prevents the bread from get, getting all soggy. So I'm going to put some corn, and then I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of oil on here to give that some flavor, so just a touch. If you had a little spray bottle, that would work nicely. And to this, I'm also going to add a little bit of salt. Use my hand, it's best that way. Oops, there we go. So now that I have uh, those two ingredients in there, I'm going to add my garnishing. So instead of putting the garnishing on top, I'm going to add it in here now. So I'm going to put some parsley here and some um, basil. So remember, these are all the ingredients that go on the salad. So I'm putting the same ingredients in the sandwich. So now I have the chicken. And the chicken, um, for the salad I use chicken breast, but for this uh, sandwich I find that chicken thighs work really nice and they're, and they're um, easier um, to cook. Uh, well, the chicken breast is easier to cook, but these cook just as well. Again, especially in the summer if you have extra from the grill. I'm going to make this two ways. I'm going to make the sandwich using this, the um, wrap, the, uh, which is the other way I'm going to make it with the wrap, and I'm making it with the uh, pita. So then you want to put the chicken in. And 
And then we have it. So we have the lettuce, the, the um, corn. Put it in place. So we have the lettuce, the corn, the um, garden, the uh, parsley, and the um, basil. So that goes here. And then let's see. I'll make both halves. So the other way I'm going to do it is in a wrap. So here's my wrap, and I'm going to put some lettuce leaves on the bottom. And not too much, actually, I'm just going to do one big one here. Take some off. This one's nicer because you can see. So then I'm going to put the um, corn. Drizzle of oil. A little bit of salt. There. Put up just enough here. And my basil. Parsley. And then the chicken. So um, I, I cooked these um, thighs, chicken thighs, and I um, took the bones out before cooking them, so it made it easier for them to cook uh, more evenly and quicker. And I also removed the skin, too, before um, cooking it. You could leave the skin on if you'd like. Then I'm going to wrap this. These, uh, these wraps are nice and pliable. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they break on you. Here we go. There's a nice wrap. I'm going to cut this in half. Now the other component of, isn't that pretty? Look at that. So you could actually cut this into pinwheels. That would look pretty. There we go. Now the other uh, component to this uh, Italian style chicken salad were potatoes. And so I have some here that I'm going to put on the side. And these are just boiled and added a little bit of um, oil to them so that they wouldn't stick. There we go. And sprinkle some parsley on top. So the potatoes have already been seasoned with a little bit of oil and salt. Just a little color. Isn't that pretty? So here we have it. So here we have a salad that's been turned into sandwiches. So now I'm going to clean up and move on to our next irresistible sandwich. For our next irresistible sandwich, I am making a zucchini and mozzarella sandwich. So first we need the bread. And for this particular sandwich, I'm going to use sliced bread. Um, and the reason for that is that the um, the zucchini are nice and moist, and so they have a lot of uh, moisture on them, and so that will soak into the bread. So here I have two pieces of bread. And um, if you'd like, you could put a spread, like a bean dip spread um, or a um, hummus spread. I decided that I wouldn't do that. I would add instead some sun-dried tomatoes. So. First thing I'm going to do, though, is uh, just put the um, zucchini. And the, these the zucchini that I've sauteed, but they would be great if you, you know, grilled them. And I keep going back to the grill because I know a lot of us do that in the summer. So, um, so if you have, uh, you know, it's a, if you have the grill on, just throw some extra vegetables, even if you're not using them that day for the meal, just um, for, the, for the next day. I'm always doing that. I'm always cooking extra stuff. So that way, the next day, I don't have to cook. And oftentimes, I'll put, cook stuff and put it in the freezer. So here I have the zucchini. And I've just sauteed these and then added a little salt and pepper. 
then I need my mozzarella. So what you want to do here with the mozzarella, you want it to be sliced nice and thin. So what I'm going to do is slice these nice and th slice the mozzarella nice and thin. The mozzarella is one kind of cheese that you can use, which goes very nicely. But you could also use like a brie cheese, uh, and even um, cream cheese, or any any kind of cheese you like. But I think a, a sort of a creamy, moist one would go nicely. I'm going to put that on top here. And so now one side of the sandwich is going to be seasoned sort of from the um, from the zucchini, from the you know seasoning on the zucchini. On this other half, I'm going to put the roasted, uh, the um, sun-dried tomatoes, because these will have some oil on them. And actually, these are pretty, sometimes they come in strips. These are pretty nice ones, um, whole pieces. So I'm going to cut those in strips instead. Because what happens is sometimes um, they can be a little chewy, and you don't want to bite into a piece of, um, you know, you don't want to bite into, into it and have this big gob just sort of come out. It smells nice, too. Actually, some dried tomato and herbs. So it's got a nice garlicky flavor, uh, aroma. So this is about enough chopped. Put that on here. The thing about sandwiches is that they're pretty, you know, personal. You can add, put in whatever you'd like. But there are some guidelines you do want to follow. I'm going to get a spoon and spoon some of that oil on the bread because it, it, it smells so good. Just the drizzle. You don't want too much. There we go. this quickly and get a plate I might cut this in three if I was using white bread on this uh, to make the sandwich um, I would probably throw in some beans just to kind of make it a little more hearty or tasting and throw in some fiber too so isn't that pretty so I'm put that over here For my next irresistible sandwich, I'm going to make a fish sandwich. I know we don't often associate fish and sandwiches together, but um, wait till you see this one. So here I have some oil in the pan, and it looks like it's getting hot here, so I'm going to keep a close eye on it. In the meantime, I have um, beaten an egg white. I'm going to put, put that here. And uh, I also have some breadcrumbs. These are breadcrumbs that I make myself. I haven't bought breadcrumbs in ages. Um, I usually just make them, my, you know, get stale bread, put it in a blender, let it do its thing, and I've got breadcrumbs. So here I'm going to dip the um, fish in the egg white. And then I'm going to dip it in the, in the um, breadcrumbs. if this is hot enough. I'm just going to drop a little bit of breadcrumbs. And if they say and they're sizzling, so it's ready. You really do want to have your, your oil, you know, your pan nice and hot. And therefore, there goes, and it sizzles. So I'm going to do the other one. I'm putting the thicker pieces first. So that way, they'll all cook at the same time. Looks like it's browning already, so I'm just going to do a quick peek. Oh, and you know, when the food is released, it means it's, um, it's ready to be turned. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Nice and brown. Oh, gorgeous. All right, so now, in the meantime, while that's doing its thing, I am going to make something else that goes with it. And 
Um, I've made this on the show before, so I'm just going to do it really quick. Uh, I'm going to make some coleslaw to go with it. And uh, in here I have a quarter of a cup of um, plain yogurt, about a, two teaspoons of mayonnaise, and a little bit, a handful of, uh, of raisins. And I'm going to measure into it a cup of these pre-cut cabbage um, or coleslaw. These are green. Oops. It, these are green. It's kind of nice. Uh, kind of nice if you can find some that you know a bag that's um, the, the red and the, and the green makes for a nice color. What I'm going to do to make up for that is add a few um, sliced radishes in here. And these are done. And they beautiful. Look at that beautiful golden brown. I'm going to put those aside and toss. Oh, I need the, I'm going to take, just going to take one radish and, and slice it really thin. It's only because I really want to see some of that red coloring in there, a little bit of color. Actually, I'm going to hold on to those on the side first. I'm going to toss this. Oops. I'm going to add a little bit of salt here. Here I feel comfortable doing like this. There we go. So this is nice and creamy. You don't want it runny. You want it creamy like this because um, you'll see how it's once it's once. It goes on the sandwich. You don't want it to be dripping all over the place. So now we're going to put it together. And here's, here's my plate. And now here I'm going to use the um, French bread. And this bread I picked up at uh, Calories of Farm Stand and Garden Center. As usual, they provide us with a lot of the produce that we use on the show. So let's see, I'm going to cut the end off. I'm cut this in half. I might take some of the inside out, so, you know, some of the inside um, part of the bread out just to, so that it's not too thick. So I'm going to add, I'm going to put the fish. Oh, this is just so beautiful. Look at that beautiful color. Right there. This is a big sandwich. I told you they were irresistible. And then right on top of here, I'm going to put some of this nice crunch of um, coleslaw. So it's sort of like a take on tartar sauce, but you're getting a little bit more than just, you know, what you would get in a tartar sauce. And again, you know, you can use as much or as little as you'd like. And because I said I liked some coloring in it, so I'm going to just put the... Um, slices of radishes right on top. This is an irresistible sandwich. I'm going to cut it in half. So here we go. So I'm just going to just decorate this with a little bit of parsley just to give it some color. And one other thing that I like to do when I have a meal like this, because this is, you know, this is very light. The fish is light. The bread is, you know, uh, plain white bread, so it's very light. So what I like to do is add a little bit of more fiber to it. And uh, th these are just plain white beans from a can. You can cook your own, but they're just, they're just beans. So I'm just going to season them with a little bit of oil, just a little bit of um, drop or so of lemon juice, and then a little bit of salt. So I've rinsed these out, so they do need a little, so just a touch. And I'm just going to toss these. 
One more thing that I'm going to add is just a little bit of onion. And serve these along with the sandwiches. I'm going to add actually just a little bit of basil leaf here. There we have it. Another gorgeous, irresistible sandwich, fish sandwich. So the irresistible cucumber relish that I'm going to make now it, to go along with our irresistible sandwiches is really simple. It's a one bowl process or procedure. So here I have a, a, a cucumber, one of those English cucumbers that's not supposed to have any seeds that I've peeled. Let me take the top off. I need about a cup, so I'd imagine about half is about a cup. I'm going to cut it in half, and I'm going to uh, cube this. Watch your fingers. There we go. That's about a cup. And then the next thing I'm going to put in is a tomato that I'm going to cut in half, and I'm going to take the, uh, the seeds out. So some of the things you want to think about when you're making a sandwich is that first you want to put on uh, like a spread of some kind, and I think that's where the, you know, typically it was just mayonnaise or margarine, and the reason for that was so that the bread wouldn't get soggy. So you need to think about what kind of a filling you have. So if you have a filling that's going to be rather dry, sort of like deli meat, you, want to, you might want to think about a spread. Um, you know, there are others. Um, doesn't have to be mayonnaise or butter. It could be like a bean dip or um, hummus or something a little bit more um, healthier. So I'm going to cut this tomato in pieces as well. So here I have the tomatoes cut in pieces. I'm going to put those in here as well. Then the next thing I'm going to add is the uh, onion. Okay, I'm done with this onion before I start crying over it. So there we go. So the next thing I'm going to add here is a couple of teaspoons of balsamic vinegar. You could use, you know, red wine vinegar if you'd like, if you wanted to. There we go. Then I'm going to use some salt and pepper. Oh, I can smell the balsamic vinegar. A little bit of salt. And then I'm going to add some oil, a couple of tablespoons or teaspoons here. I'm using this because it's handy. And remember, cooking doesn't have to be exact. It's not like baking. This is about a tablespoon and a half here. These are big spoons. I'm going to toss that. I'm going to add some parsley in here as well. And what would tomatoes be without basil? So I'm going to add some basil too. Again, look at the colors, how well they all complement each other. And so to this, I'm going to add some pepper. And um, I was looking for the, I brought the special um, freshly ground black pepper here. And that goes. So now this, um, I've, I've, if you, as you can see, I've sort of chopped, chopped it up into fairly decent size, good, you know, size pieces. Um, it, it would be kind of difficult to put in a sandwich, but if you wanted it to be a topping for a sandwich, then you, you'd want to cut these much, much smaller. And actually, um, when you see it in some supermarkets, they have them chopped up, and they're much smaller. And what would a sandwich be without a little dessert? And Given that this is delicious simplicity, one of the simplest dessert that you can make is, of course, fresh fruit. So here I have some fresh fruit already cut up. 
And uh, what I'm going to do to this is because of, um, I want to serve it a little differently. So I'm going to plate it in a flat plate. There we go. Now to this, what I'm going to do is sort of a, on the theme of, this is often done with strawberries. So we've done that on the show as well, uh, strawberries with balsamic vinegar. So I'm going to drizzle a little bit of that on here as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to the balsamic vinegar before I do that, and about a teaspoon, so not a lot. Um, a lot of people, you know, are surprised when you use a little sugar, but it depends, you know, how much sugar you use. And this is just a little teaspoon on, you know, on the, uh, a dish that would serve several people. So here's a couple of teaspoons of uh, balsamic vinegar on that. So I'm going to let this sit for about a, just about a minute uh, to help with the uh, sugar melting. So I'm going to put this aside because the other thing I'm going to do here is add a little bit of chocolate. And of course, this chocolates are a complement of Winfrey Spudge and Chocolate. They have beautiful stuff. They have definitely some of the best chocolate that I've had. So I'm going to um, slice this, chop it up. Um, this is a great combination, chocolate and balsamic vinegar. And just the, the aroma of the two together here is mouth-watering. All right, so here I have the balsamic vinegar. The sugar's not fully um, melted, but that's all right. Oh, the combination is just incredible. The smell of the chocolate and the balsamic vinegar. I don't want to add too much because you can always add, but you can't take away. And I'm going to sprinkle some chocolate. If you find that the sugar has not melted completely, um, what you can do is just sprinkle some on top. And again, it's, this isn't the kind of sugar that, you know, one should be worried about in terms of your health because it's, it's so little. Just a, a teaspoon's not going to cause any real harm. So here we have this beautiful um, fresh fruit with balsamic vinegar and a little bit of chocolate. And um, I don't have any on hand, but a little bit of um, mint around would, would really add a little bit more color. So here we have the dessert. So here we have another delicious meal for a delicious simplicity today. And we've made several sandwiches. We've deconstructed a chicken salad, Italian style chicken salad, and turned it into uh, sandwiches here. We've made a pita bread pocket, and we've also made a roll up. And we've served the potatoes that were part of the salad as a side, and the corn that was also part of the salad is in the filling, of course, along with the chicken. And then we made a crunchy um, sandwich with fish uh, and topped it with um, coleslaw and served that with a little bit, with some um, cannellini beans that we just tossed in a salad type dressing. And we also have a beautiful um, zucchini sandwich with mozzarella on whole wheat bread and a um, cucumber relish to go along with any of these sandwiches or by themselves. And a beautiful, delicious dessert with fresh fruit, balsamic vinegar, and a sprinkle of chocolate. And so I want to, again, thank our sponsors, Calorizo's Farm Stand and uh, Garden Center, uh, Winfrey Spudge and Chocolate. And most of all, I want to thank you for watching and do it again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.